<laughs> All right, so on page 291, we're going to also reference uh, the table that you guys completed on 290. So maybe you might want to have that one available as well. We're going to try to look for patterns um, between or in that table that you guys completed so that we can get some relationships here. So we're eventually going to get to the point where we can just look at an equation and determine if it's exponential growth or exponential decay based on certain things uh, that are going on in the equation. So on page 290, okay, let's reference that here. Um, we're going to try to look for four basic connections in this table, and some of them are a little bit more difficult than others, so I'm going to try to guide you through them. Let's just take a look um, for numbers 1 through 6. These are related to the 12 graphs that were on a previous page that you guys analyzed. So we're just going to take a look at 1 through 6 for now. Can you find some type of pattern between whether you have a growth or decay function? All of these didn't have any reflections in them, so there were no negatives. Um, but maybe you can find some type of relationship between growth or decay and what the B value is, a.k.a. the base, in your exponential function. Okay, again, we're looking at 1 through 6. Do you notice anything interesting? What do you see? Yeah. If B is greater than 1, then it's growth. So if it's between 0 and 1, it's decay. It's decay. Do we see that? Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. We have, those are, those are actually the first two we're going to write down. If B is greater than zero, or sorry, greater than one, and there are no reflections. Okay, there's no negative out front. There's no negative up in the power spot. Okay. The graph is growth, okay, exponential growth. Uh, the other one that Rebecca noticed, if the B or base value is between zero and one, and there are no reflections, the graph is decay. Can someone describe for me the difference between exponential growth and exponential decay? Like if you were looking at a graph, how could you determine if it's growth or decay? Remember? Yeah. Growth moves away from decay goes towards. Okay, so sometimes I say growth grows away. Okay, you're either growing up or you're growing down, okay, but you're somehow growing away from an asymptote. Decay moves towards the asymptote. Really good. Okay, are those kind of obvious when you look at one through six, those two relationships? Okay, let's try to take a look at seven through 12 now. This is where it gets a little more interesting because we are throwing in some reflections here. If you look at seven through 12, Again, looking at a connection between growth or decay, what the B value is, and maybe if you have a reflection, can we find some connections or relationships? These are a little trickier because we're throwing in kind of an extra variable or criteria here. Let's maybe go step by step. Okay, I'm going to move this away from the other from the other day. Let's check this out. What if B is greater than one? Okay, what if our base is greater than one? But this time 
we're going to throw in some type of reflection because we already analyzed if there were no reflections. Okay, what was happening? Let's see if we throw in a reflection. So if the base is greater than one and we have an x-axis reflection, okay, will we have growth or decay? But on the, other, on the other hand, what if our base was still greater than one, but we wanted to analyze what would happen if we had a y-axis reflection? Okay, let's take a look at a table. So we're just looking at the base is bigger than one. So seven through 12, that would be these starred ones. Can we determine what happens if we have a y-axis reflection or an x-axis? Do we have growth or decay in either one of those cases? Can you find a pattern? Yeah. X-axis is growth, right? Y-axis is decay, all right. So x-axis reflection, we had growth y-axis was decay. All right, let's try the same thing, but this time instead of a base that's bigger than one, let's check out if the base is between zero and one. So we'll look at what happens for an x-axis reflection and the y-axis. All right, so let's take a look at the table seven through 12 again. We're looking at a base value between zero and one. So that's these three. What's a connection if we have an x-axis reflection versus a y-axis? Memory, yeah. And Y looks like growth. Perfect. All right. So those are some connections that you might be able to draw based off the table on page 290 from the other day. Okay. But there's some something that we're really not um, considering when we look at this table. Is there a scenario that we kind of left out? Can you think about it? What do you think, Marie? Increasing or decreasing? Okay, so that's that's one column that we didn't really pay close attention to. That's okay. Okay, um, but what I'm let me rephrase the question a little bit. In terms of the reflections, is there a scenario or a case that we didn't really? include. You can have no reflections, you can have just x-axis, just y-axis, yeah? You could have both, right? You can flip it both ways. We haven't really looked at that just yet, but we are going to do that today. Okay, so what scenario is not included? We'll say what if we have both reflections? Okay, what if we took an exponential graph and we flipped it across the x-axis and the y-axis? How does that change the growth or decay property or characteristic, if it even changes at all? Okay, so we're going to investigate that in this chart at the bottom. Okay, so take a look at this uh, equation over here. We're going to first identify the number of reflections. Okay, so do we just have an x-axis? Do we just have a y-axis? Do we have both? How do you know? Where are you looking? Can you tell? Yeah. There's both an X and a Y axis reflection. Okay, how do you know? Where were you looking? Um, at, before the base, mm -hmm. there, that would indicate the X axis, and before the exponent, like whatever, before the X and the exponent, 
there you go. Okay, so we have two negatives depending on where the negative is located. Remember when we did transformations at the beginning of the year, like the inside part, the outside part, where things are located affects how the graph changes? We're bringing that back for these exponential functions. So if we have a negative on the outside, that's an x-axis flip. If we have a negative on the inside, the inside for an exponential is kind of considered just the exponent spot. Okay, that's considered a y-axis. So in this case, we do have both reflections. So what we're going to try to do is sketch a graph of this, and based off the graph, we'll determine if it's growth or decay. So let's go ahead and just draw a rough grid or plane there. Can we maybe identify any characteristic from the equation that we could label on the graph? Perhaps an asymptote? Do you know where the asymptote of this graph might be located? Yeah? There we go. Okay, it's what's being added or subtracted on the end. So somewhere over here at this height of three, we'll go ahead and draw in that asymptote. All right. So let's think about this. Let's say that those two negatives, those two reflections were not there, okay? Just imagine they weren't there. If the base is two thirds, would we have a growth or decay function? Take a look at the properties one through four that we listed at the top. If we didn't have any reflections and the base was two thirds, would we have growth or decay? Yeah, decay. decay, okay. So you don't have to write this down. I want you to think about it because I don't, I don't want you to have to memorize these four properties because it's kind of a lot. I mean, these two are the basic ones to understand, but when you get into these other two and you have those changes or different um, variables or criteria to analyze, they can get confusing. Okay, I want you to just think about what these reflections are doing to a graph. So let's first pretend that the reflections were not there. Just based off of the two-thirds, we know we have an exponential decay graph. Okay, this is what it would normally look like. Okay, decay, it goes towards the asymptote. But we have to take this initial graph and we're going to reflect it both times. Okay, across the x-axis and the y-axis. It doesn't matter which one you do first because you're eventually going to do both anyway. Okay, so let's maybe try the x-axis first. If you were to take this graph and flip it over the x-axis, basically upside down, wouldn't this shape, if you flip it upside down, now look like that? Does that make sense? Okay, so we no longer have the beginning graph because we flipped it, we applied one of those transformations. But now, what if we were to take this graph, okay, and flip it across the y-axis, meaning left and right? Instead of looking like this, let me use another color, if you flip it left and right, wouldn't it look like that now? Can you visualize that in your head? Might be a little difficult, okay? So this red graph, is what this equation will look like. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the base just to determine if it's growth or decay and then we'll apply the two transformations to get our sketch. Okay, so we'll say this is a rough sketch of the graph. So is this final graph after we did both transformations growth or decay? Growth, yep, as you go from left to right, you're going away from the asymptote. Perfect. Okay, so even though we started with decay, okay, because we said the two-thirds, that's between zero and one, okay, normally that's a decay function. After we applied both transformation, both transformations that actually, actually changed to a growth. A little tricky. All right, let's try another one. Um, number of reflections, we have a negative out front, so that's our x-axis flip, but also a negative in the power position, so that's our y-axis. Okay, so we have both. 
Let's go ahead and try to draw a rough sketch. Where can I put my asymptote? Yeah, two, two good. Okay, so let's think about this. Ignore the reflections initially, okay? Your base value is two. Is that growth or decay? Yeah, growth. Okay, so initially, maybe I'll write this a little smaller. Initially, you are growing away from the asymptote. Okay, that's what the beginning or parent graph looks like. But we have to apply both transformations to this graph. So maybe we'll do the x-axis first. If we flip it upside down, it'll now look like that. But now we have to flip that one left and right for the y-axis reflection. So it might look like that. Let's go ahead and draw that shape on our graph. Am I going too fast? We doing okay? Can we visualize those flips? Okay, growth or decay? I think I heard it. We got decay. Notice how we're going towards or we're approaching that asymptote. Okay, so we started with growth. Okay, that, that B value is bigger than one, but after both transformations, it changed to decay. Let's try the next one. Do you guys want to try it? Try to draw the graph. Bless you, bless you. All right, any takers on the graph? Where'd you put your asymptote, your horizontal asymptote? Good, Marie? Negative two, all right, so somewhere down here. All right, and can you describe what your graph looked like or how you developed your graph? You wanna keep going? Sure. Okay, so how'd you know it was decay? That's good. Good, your base was in between zero and one. So this is what the original or parent graph looks like but we have to apply both transformations. You want to keep going? Okay, so that's going to flip it upside down. Good. Okay, so that's going to flip it left and right. Good. All right, so that ending red graph there, we're going to uh, place on our graph over here. So it's going to look something like that. Growth or decay? Yeah, growth. we got growth. Okay, so notice how we kind of have a little pattern here. If you look at number one, our base value was between zero and one, which initially means decay if you don't have any reflections. But once you apply both, it changed to growth. So it looks like whatever you start with and you have both reflections, it changes to the other type of um, description, either growth versus decay. For number two, our base value was bigger than one, because we had two, which initially means growth, but after both reflections, it changed to decay. Okay, so let's go ahead and these four criteria we got from the table on the other page are great, but we're gonna refine them a little bit now that we know what happens if we have both reflections. Okay, so that's what we're gonna formally write down um, on the next page. So these are the adjusted um, 
representations or patterns that we have. So from now on, if you want to reference these four, these are the ones that kind of include all the different scenarios or um, variables or criteria to consider. So initially we said if B was greater than one with no reflections, we had growth, okay? But what if we have both reflections? Okay, what the, where is the B located or what value would B have if you have both reflections to give you growth? Can you look at the table we just did on the other page? Yeah? Right, okay, so if B is greater than one with no reflections or if B is between zero and one with both reflections, okay, we have growth. So we kind of adjusted um, the previous example we did now that we know what happens if we have both reflections. Let's try number two. Um, we said previously if B was between zero and one with no reflections, okay, that was decay. But what's your B value if you have both reflections? Can you look at the table we just did, the three at the bottom? What was your B value with both reflections if you wanted decay? Yeah? Okay, with both reflections, good. Okay, that was decay. Now the other, the other two, number three and number four, those aren't going to change because we already considered um, that missing scenario. What if we have both reflections going on? So if you want to copy them down again, you can. Um, I'm just going to write down same as before, okay? Um, but it's your notes so you can do what you want. We just really had to adjust the uh, number one and number two to take into account what if we have both reflections, okay? So this is the meat, uh, the next few examples that we're gonna go over. Based off of an equation and all these different relationships and ways we can analyze what the equation kind of looks like, we're gonna try to determine is it growth or if it's decay and also where the horizontal asymptote is, okay? So no calculator, we're gonna try to do this based off of these characteristics. All right, so let's try this first one together. Let's, let's do this idea that we don't have any reflections. Okay, what's the parent graph kind of look like? Just the starting one. So based off of this equation and the B value, what would your parent graph start as? Growth or decay? Can you determine? Yeah. How did you know? It's greater than one. Okay, so we'll say um, B is greater than one. So initially, that's not how you spell initially. Is that how you spell initially? Yeah, okay. So initially, we'll say growth. If you want to draw a growth graph, you can, as a visual. Okay, but we have a reflection that we would have to apply to that graph. What type of reflection do we have? X-axis or Y-axis? X-axis. All right, so X-axis reflection. Okay, so we have to take this initial growth graph and reflect it over the x-axis, meaning upside down. So it's going to look like that. 
that's the only reflection we have. Okay, we only have that negative on the outside. So in the end, after you applied all those different uh, reflections, is it growth or decay? The question is, is it still growth or did it change? Yeah. It's still growth. The difference is instead of growing upward towards infinity, it's now just growing downwards, okay, because you did that, you did that flip. So we'll say, so still growth. Okay, you guys can write this however you want. Okay, it's just how you get there in the end. I'm just trying to go through some of the logical steps you can think about in your head. Okay, how this graph is changing. So in the end, we still have a growth. Let's go ahead and state um, where the horizontal asymptote is located. Can you tell based off the equation? Yeah. Three. three. All right, so we have a y equals three. Horizontal means it goes across the y-axis at some height. Okay, specifically for this one, it would be three. So we'll say y equals three is your horizontal asymptote, HA for short. We doing okay? Hanging in there? All right, let's try the next one. What's your B value? Okay, don't worry about any reflections just yet. What's your B value and does that mean growth or decay initially? There we go, we have a quarter, okay, 0.25. So B is between zero and one. So if we didn't have any reflections, would that be growth or decay? DK, good. All right, so if you wanna draw a DK graph, you can. All right, what type of reflection do we have? X-axis, Y-axis, or both? Yeah? Y-axis, good. So we need to take this initial graph, this initial decay graph, and flip it left and right. So it's still going to be above the asymptote, just flipped. So is it still decay after we did the reflection or did it change to growth? Can you tell? Yeah, change to growth, good. Right. So in the end, we now have a growth graph. Can we determine where the horizontal asymptote is? Where this dotted line is drawn specifically? Yeah. Negative two. Negative two. Y equals negative two is your horizontal asymptote. Looks good. Do you guys want to try the last one on your own? Give it a shot. Okay. Ignore the reflections. Just think about what the graph is starting as. Apply those transformations to see how it changes and then determine if it's growth or decay.
All right, let's check this one out. So what is your exponential graph initially looking at or looking as between or before you take into account those reflections? Can you tell? What'd you write down? Yeah. Right. Okay. So what I've seen in the past is students kind of get into the mindset that if the base is a fraction, that automatically makes it between zero and one. Okay. Because that's where we're used to fractions being located, but you got to take a look at that fraction. Three over two is the same as one and a half, which is bigger than one. So don't just go based off of it if it's a fraction or not. So B value is greater than one. We'll say initially, I'll learn to spell. So initially growth. All right, how did we change it? Any reflections? Good, Marie. All right, so let's try maybe x-axis first. I mean, you got to do both anyway. It doesn't matter where you start. So if we take this growth graph and reflect it across the x-axis, meaning upside down, it's now underneath that asymptote because you're flipping it. Let's now apply the y-axis reflection. So we're still going to be underneath the asymptote, but instead of um, having the left-hand side close to the asymptote and the right-hand side going away, those are going to flip. Flip it left and right. Okay, so after both of those reflections were done, is this new and final graph growth or decay? Did it stay growth or did it change? It changed to decay, yep. How'd you guys do? Good? All right, last but not least, kind of the easiest part in my opinion, where's our horizontal asymptote? Yeah, three, good. Two thumbs up? Perfect, all right. We'll stop there for today. We're gonna to deal a lot more with these graphs tomorrow. Okay, we're just gonna take a look at a graph and try to determine what is that A value, okay, that number out front, what's the base, where's the horizontal asymptote, C value located, all that good stuff.